was this theme for tonight. You know, I was like, God, what is it you're wanting to say to us? Love notes from heaven. Ooh, it's just like a warm hug. It is such a cool theme. And I was praying, John and I were actually on vacation a couple weeks ago, and I was praying one morning, and I felt the Lord just so strongly say, I want you to tell them this. Do you want to know what it is? (laughs) So I started praying about what he said. I mean, honestly, I I think it was actually the middle of the night, because that happens to me a lot. I'll wake up and I'll sense God speaking to my heart. But when, when I felt him say it to me, I was so excited by the thought. And it's just four simple words. So you can write it on top of your, where you're taking notes or maybe you're taking notes on your phone. And you know, typically I'm like, you can take notes if you want. Tonight, you have to take notes, okay? <laughs> this is a love note from heaven, people. Okay, this is important. I really do believe God's gonna speak to you through the message, not because of me, but because of him. But these four words, top of your page, you ready? I am with you. I am with you. You know, in the moment God said that to my spirit, I was like, That is so cool. You know, you can know that. You can have read it. You can can think about it, like, just randomly. But when you really focus on that thought that the God of all the universe is with me, is with me, there in the middle of the night, He whispered, I am with you. You know, the Bible is a love letter to us. On that same trip, um, two weeks ago, we were at a restaurant and I had taken my Bible down to the restaurant because I was gonna take it to to sit by uh, the pool and read. And um, went down to the pool, didn't get it out and was reading, I was reading actually another book as well and decided to do that instead. And then I went back up to my, to our room later in the day and I got a phone call from security and they said, um, are you Debbie Lindell? And I said, yes. And he, he was a gentleman and he said, well, we found a book of yours in the restaurant and I just wanted you to know it's safe. And I was like, oh, my Bible. I, I knew exactly what it was. And I was like, okay, please, please, please keep it safe because it, it's like my most treasured possession. <laughs> it's got rips and tears. And those rips and tears are precious. But um, what was cool was later in the day, um, they called back and they said, Hey, they had said, come later down to the reception desk and you can pick it up. Well, they called back because I hadn't gone down. They said, you know, we'd be happy to bring it to your room. And I said, that would be wonderful. So they did that, which was great. Well, when I got home, um, in the back of my Bible, which I didn't see until I got home and I went um, one morning to, to read and have my devotions, and in the back, I felt this card, this heavy card in the back. And I pulled it out and it was from the girl in security that had brought my Bible to my room. And she, she had written a note and said, I am so glad we found your Bible. I could tell that it was a treasure to you. Is that not the coolest? She was right. And it should be to all of us. But really, What we have to understand is every aspect of God's word is meant to remind us all woven through, it's like a thread of God's incredible love for us. 
And so tonight, that's really what I want you to see. And we're going to start by reading, and you've heard me read out of this chapter before, but I'm going to read a another portion of it to just set the table for what we're going to talk about. But it's Psalms 139. You know, I love this Psalm and it so connects with just design sisterhood, design for life. But the first part of the Psalm, and I think they're going to put it on the screen. It says you, this is out of the Passion Translation. And it's actually, I took um, portions of the top part of Psalms 139 and wove them together to read to you. It's very long, so I kind of condensed it just to set the, the stage for what we're gonna talk about. So Psalms 139, you are so intimately aware of me, Lord. This is just too wonderful, deep, and incomprehensible. Your understanding of me brings me wonder and strength Where could I go from your spirit? The psalmist is saying, he's he's saying there in his mind, he's like, I know there's nowhere I could go where you're not there. Where could I run or hide my face? If I go up to the heavens, you're there. If I go down to the realm of the dead, you're there too. If I fly with wings into the shining dawn, is that not so gorgeous and beautiful? But it's like, no matter where I go, God, you are there. If I fly into the radiant sunset, you're there waiting. Wherever I go, your hand will guide me. Your strength will empower me. Every single moment you are thinking of me. Every single moment you are thinking of me. It's amazing how precious and wonderful to consider that you cherish me constantly in every thought. That's spoken over you. David, through his word, is speaking about God's view how God thinks about you, Tammy. (laughs) There is no God like our God. No God like our God. One who chooses to be close to us, who longs for us to know him, who loves and cherishes each one of us individually. That's so hard to comprehend that with the millions and billions of people on planet Earth, that he wants to know me and have close relationship, intimate relationship. He wants to know, not only does he want to know my name, he does know my name. He knows your name. And his presence surrounds you. In Isaiah 41, 9 and 10, it says this, you are my servant, for I've chosen you. Listen to this. Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. God's presence, God's I am with you presence is the solution for everything we face in life. Everything. The word afraid or fear in this verse encompasses things that, here, listen to me that keep us from experiencing all the goodness and blessing and understanding of God's presence in our life. The Bible says perfect love casts out fear. And I felt like God spoke to my heart and said love and God's presence are work in tandem. When you don't understand or value or believe that God's presence is always there for you, fear is gonna take over. You've been there. 
I don't think there's any girl on planet Earth that hasn't experienced the battle of fear. When someone loves us, to receive that love, to experience it to the fullness, to its fullness, we have to believe that they love us. And love and presence go hand in hand. Love and presence. John, my John, this is just a stack of a few of the letters he mailed to me faithfully every day for a year and a half. We were engaged for a year and a half. It was way too long. <laughs> way too long. I pulled one of them out just to, to um, actually I read, I'm lying, I read three of them. <laughs> and I could have kept reading, this was so fun. But the first one I pulled out, and James River Girls, you'll get why I got tickled at this. He signed it, um, he wrote the whole page, he said, this is a short letter, I'm sorry. Um, but he said, he said at the close, the best is yet to come. <laughs> I was like, ooh, you weren't kidding, babe. No, you weren't. You didn't know that. Okay. Love, John. But what struck me, and I knew it to be true, even though I hadn't read the letters for, honestly, years, I knew when I read through some of them what I would see. I can't wait to be married with you. I can't wait to be with you. I can't wait to share life with you. Love and presence, they're connected. If somebody says, I love this person, but they don't want to be with them, there is definitely a disconnect. Our God is like no other God. He loves us and he wants to be intimately connected with us every day, connected with every part of our life, surrounding us with his love and his care. So I wanna give you um, four thoughts regarding this I am with you love note. And I wanna start with the first one being, I am with you to give you confidence. Because I, I think when we dig deeper into why would God wanna be with us, I mean, obviously it's to show his love for us. We understand that, hopefully now. But as well, it's to specifically give us strength and the, I guess, the tools that we need to walk through life. God's with us to help us. And the first one being to give us confidence. And boy, I think this is so critical for every girl to hear. So many girls struggle with confidence. They, they battle insecurity. They battle believing that they're enough. Anybody in this room had ever experienced that? It was interesting, one of my dear friends in James River Youth, wow, where are you? That was not very good, let's try that again. James River Youth! God is doing a work in James River Youth. He's raising up mighty leaders. <laughs> but one of the girls from the youth group came over to me during the worship and she said, Debbie, I feel like God gave me a word, which, oh my goodness, I'm just like, I almost melted in a puddle of like, wow, God's speaking to our youth. So awesome. And she said, I think there's girls in the room that need to understand that God thinks they're enough. Wow. 
I don't know if this is gonna speak to you directly tonight, but I've had, there was a very specific moment in time when God was speaking to my heart and I was doubting that I was enough. There's a story in Exodus 3, and you'll know this story because we talked about it if you were at conference. Um, the man's name is Moses that this story is about. Do you remember him? And in Exodus 3, God is calling Moses to what seemed like an insurmountable task. And that was to take the children of Israel and deliver them from the bondage of the Egyptians. And Moses' question was, who am I to do this impossible thing? In other words, he was afraid. He was afraid that he was enough for what God was calling him to do. And this story connects with every girl in this room. You don't have to be called to deliver a nation out of bondage to feel like you're not enough for whatever God has positioned you to do in this season of your life. The enemy never wants you to feel like you're enough, ever. So Moses doubted that God had the right person. And he actually said, God, and this is my paraphrase, you got the wrong person, God. I don't have what it takes. I don't have what it takes to be a mom. I don't have what it takes to be single at this season of my life. I don't have what it takes to be a teacher in the public school system. I don't have what it takes. You write your name or you write what you have felt inadequate to do. And wherever, as a believer, wherever, unless you're walking in complete disobedience to God, wherever you're positioned is what God has called you to do. The steps of a righteous girl. The steps of a righteous girl are ordered of the Lord. So if you're walking with a desire to honor and please God, then whatever he's opened the door for you to do is his will for your life. So this is where Moses was. He's like, he's like walking with God. He had just seen the fiery bush burning. Do you remember that? I mean, God's presence is with him. And he's like, I don't, I don't think I can do what you're calling me to do, God. Here's the deal. Whenever we focus on ourselves, we forget that God's presence is with us. And we'll always come up short. The interesting thing to me is God didn't even respond when, God, when Moses said, who am I, God? It was like a question. God, tell me. You know, sometimes it's like we want, God, just tell me I'm, I'm you know. So there's a balance between needing to be pampered <laughs> and believing God's presence is going to be with you. Because yes. honestly, it's like a contradictory. Even though we're enough and God's word says, I know the plans that I have for you. We're not enough. Does that make sense? We need God to do all that he calls us to do. We need him to be the amazing, faith-filled mom that he's called you to be. You need God's presence around you, knowing how to navigate the questions from your five-year-old. Or is our puppy going to be in heaven? You know, those kind of questions. Yeah. Those deep theological questions, yeah. 
<laughs> Exodus 3.12. So God doesn't answer Moses. That's what I find very interesting. You know what God does? He says, look at it. God said what? Let's say it. I will be with you. Moses, I could care less. What gifts you think you have or don't have, that's really irrelevant. If you're holding on to my hand, you got all that you need to do what I've called you to do and to accomplish my will and purpose for your life. Honestly, I have asked that question, who am I? When for those that are in the room that have been a part of Design Sisterhood, you've heard this story. But God called me to, I felt him in my chair in the family room by our gas fireplace that I sat in every morning. I heard him whisper, Debbie, I'm calling you to lead. And I was a big chicken. I was like, God, I think you got the wrong girl. And I tucked it in my back pocket, hoping he would change his mind. That's just the honest truth. And it wouldn't go away. He kept saying, Daddy. The sisterhood ministry here at James River Church, it was running about 350, 400 girls. And I was like, God, it's too big for me. It's too big. I don't know how to talk. I don't know how to say Barbados, whatever it is. That's true. I mean, I felt so much like Moses. <laughs> it's like, I can relate to you, Betty. <laughs> so um, anyway, I seriously was running from God's call. And one day I was actually on a trip with a couple that were on staff here. And um, they, we, were, we had gone to be a part of this, it was like a little mini conference. And there was one day that we had free and they said, we should, we should go sightseeing. And I said, no, I can't. I, I didn't tell them why, but I'm like, I gotta figure this out. And I have, we had three kids at home at the time. I'm like, I need alone time with God. Ever been there? I gotta tell him so he'll listen because he hasn't been listening when I'm sitting in the chair. So it's gonna be me and Jesus and he's gonna listen that he's got the wrong girl. So I shut myself up in this hotel room and um, had a box of Kleenex, which I knew I'd need, and my Bible. And I, I still to this day remember the bed the, um, it was like not a comforter, it was like a satin, oh, like oh, teal, not teal, let's see, burgundy. Burgundy and like hunter green flowers, nylon with the tough, you know what I'm talking about, the poofiness, yeah. And I was like laying out on this bed going, God, would you please listen? I am not your girl. The ball, like about four hours in, I'm bawling. There's Kleenex everywhere. I'm like, you're not listening to me. That's seriously how I felt. Because every time I tell him, he'd say, would you just get your act together and say yes to me? I mean, that's, it was that kind of battle. And about eight hours in, and I am not exaggerating. This is like, this is like tug of war. I should have known he was gonna win, you know? <laughs> it's God, for goodness sake. But um, about eight hours in, I lifted my hands towards heaven, and I said, God, 
I surrender. I'm your girl. Do whatever you need to do with me. Just please help me. And you know, the craziest thing happened. I got all excited. <laughs> like, it was like a switch turned on. You know, obedience is a crazy thing. When you sense God speaking to your heart, and it could be, oh, a million different things. It could be to, to walk across the restaurant and speak to somebody. Jody, where's Jody? She did that. She in overflow. Jody's in overflow. Pastor Jody. She was sitting in a restaurant this week and felt God, the Holy Spirit, whisper to her and say, I want you to go across the restaurant and talk to that girl over in that booth. And I want you to tell her that God cares about her and sees where she's at. So I was like, okay, I will. Walked over there, said those exact words. The girl started bawling, said basically, and I'm paraphrasing, how did you know? I'm, I needed this. I'm walking through a very difficult time. And I believe she's here tonight because Jody invited her. Yay, so great. Here's the deal. Don't miss out on what God wants to do. His presence will be with you. So you don't have to worry about, do I have what it takes? Because he's going to fill you with everything you need to do what he's calling you to do. Amen. Amen. So Point number two. Praise you, Lord. So good. You ready? Yes. I am with you to supply you with courage. Oh. I am with you to supply you with courage. Actually, Savannah helped me with this point because I was like, I need a word. Like, what... What does that I am with you encourage? What does God do? And she's like, he supplies us with courage. He gives us the courage we need to accomplish. Because you can say yes, and you can be all excited, but you can be in a puddle on the floor if you don't keep your eyes on Jesus. I've been there. I mean, I could so relate to, to Hannah's story from today. You know, the enemy wants us to fear. The enemy wants us to be afraid. And if we keep our eyes on the enemy, we will be in a corner in a fetal position. Because God is calling this sisterhood to big things. We need to be filled with his presence. We need to walk with confidence. And we need to be supplied with courage. There's another story in the Bible that is so cool. It's in the Old Testament. In fact, I think it's one of the most unique and just like wow battle stories in the Old Testament. It's about a man named Gideon. He as well was given an impossible task. He was a leader during the time of Israel's history when they were once again up against it, the nation of Israel. And they were on the edge of defeat. And the Bible tells us this, that Gideon, listen to this. This is gonna speak to somebody. This is what the Bible says about him, that he was the least in his family. And that his tribe was the least in Israel. I mean, this guy wasn't like very well thought of in town, so to speak. Yet God picked him. <laughs> I so love that. I so love that. God picked him. 
to make a difference in history. To lead the Israelite army into battle, and it wasn't just any battle. I want you to listen to this, because this is crazy. So you've got this guy that's not really well thought of. He may be not well spoken. He, who knows why he was considered the least in his family? But God picked him to lead this army. The Midianite army that they were up against was, they say, 135,000 strong. And when God told Gideon to go fight this army of 135,000 men, do you know how many soldiers he had in his army? 300. 300. Those are not good odds. Gideon, God's word says this, was petrified. Petrified to fight. Who would it be? But God reminded Gideon of why he would win. Because God said, when he called Gideon to go into battle, he said, I'm going to give you victory. And then God told him why. In Judges 6.16, and the Lord said, there it is again, I will be with you. You will not, you will destroy the Midianites. Look at that. As if you were fighting one man. That's amazing. Why was he able to have victory when the odds were so against him? One reason. God was with him. I want to ask you this. Are you up against a battle? I know some of you are because I've heard stories. Are you overwhelmed? Are you feeling like the odds are against you? God's love note to you right now is this. I am with you. I am with you and I am going to help you. Your enemy may look bigger. Your enemy may be louder. Your enemy may be in your face. And I'm not talking about people. I'm talking about circumstances. People aren't our enemy. Satan is our enemy. People are not our enemy. But you are not in the battle alone. Be strong and courageous. God says to you tonight, I am with you. Look at Isaiah 43 with me. It's, it's repeating some of what we've already heard, but then it goes on to say some really amazing things. Do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I've called you by name, and you are mine. God chose you. His spirit is in you and his presence is surrounding you so that when you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you, consume you for I am the Lord your God. Amen. Amen. Here's the deal. The worst thing you can do when you're in a battle is focus on the battle. Refocus your attention on where the victory is going to come from. The victory comes from the Lord. You know, I think one of the saddest things to watch in ministry, and especially in leading girls, is to see them struggle over and over again and not have victory in their life. Your greatest resource, girls, is God's presence. That's your greatest resource. 
And some of you are not tapping in to what could help you live a victorious, blessed, flourishing life. You're not, you're not connected to God's presence that is, is there for you to connect with. And you know who you are and God's speaking to you not tonight. And, and you know, oh my goodness, that's it. That's it. You know, I, and I would say this, if, if, you've be, if you're disconnected, you're like, you, you, know, you know the right things to do, but somewhere along the way, you, you've just disconnected from his presence. It could be maybe you're not obeying him. And you know, you know that there's things he has called you to lay down, to set aside. You've allowed things in your life possibly that you know are honoring and pleasing to him. Does that mean he doesn't love you? No, he absolutely cherishes you. But you've created distance. Maybe you've put up walls. Maybe you've been hurt. Something's hurt you and, and you've allowed that transference to, to create a wedge or a, a wall between you and your heavenly father. And tonight, that wall is gonna be broken. In Jesus' name. Amen. So your victory in battle is connected to God's presence. And you know what? I love this. Your battle, whatever it is, is no match for him. I mean, God's got this. God's got this. And he is going to help you win the battle. Have victory over the enemy. Number three, I am with you to reveal my love. Ooh, I love this. I was like, what order do I put these in? They're all so like great, but I, I knew that this one needed to go here for several reasons, but this, God's presence, he wants you to understand how much he adores you. He adores you. You are his child. You are his daughter. And I don't know what kind of family dynamic you were raised in, or maybe you're, you're in it, and it's not healthy. Don't allow what you're seeing in a male person that is supposed to care and love you affect your understanding of who God is. His love is perfect. I love this verse in Romans, it says, there is nothing, nothing that can separate you from God's love, nothing. No situation, it says no sin. Now what that is referring to is God's love is bigger than any sin. You could come to him and immediately you got come to him and you've got, God, I'm sorry. And he's like, all right, baby girl, let's do this. You know, I've forgotten that, let's go. He doesn't hold it against you. There's, there's no shame, there's no guilt, there's no condemnation. This father's like no other, perfect love. Remember that verse, perfect love casts out fear. When you understand the perfect love of the Father, fear be gone. Fear be gone. In Jesus' name. And he is constantly revealing his love to our hearts. Constantly. Remember I said love and presence, are, they're hand in hand, they're side by side. When you're walking 
in an understanding that God's presence is always there, you see things you wouldn't see. When you wake up in the morning, honestly, this happens to John and I pretty much every morning. Savannah can vouch for this. We're like, look at the sky. Look at it. We happen to live in a house where we have windows that overlook, that they, we can see the sky over the trees. It's kind of up on a hill. And the same thing at night. I mean, I would say six times out of seven <laughs> nights, we're like looking out the window going, look at the sky. Isn't it amazing? God did that for us tonight. You're aware of his presence and it changes your attitude. It changes the atmosphere of your home because you understand all these things you see around. Look down at what you're wearing right now. Look down at it. I'm not kidding. God gave that to you. Is that not cool? He cares so much about you. He gave you that pink sweater. And it looks so good on you. You know, you're just like aware of God's presence. When you walk into a restaurant or a store, you're aware that God's presence is walking in there with you. And you're like in tune. God, what do you want to do with me today? What do you want to do with me here in TJ Maxx? <laughs> yes. I was walking in TJ Maxx. Where's Ruby? Is Ruby in here? Hey, Ruby girl, stand up, Ruby. Okay, there's Ruby. What was it, Ruby? Was it a year ago? A year and two months. I didn't know Ruby from a load of coal. And I, was, I walked in TJ Maxx and there was Ruby. She was standing when you walk, how many of you love TJ Maxx? Yeah. I know my route. I go by the candles, the shoes. Gotta go by the shoes, you just never know. And the purses, yeah, I do love purses, Savannah, she's right. I, yes, shh, okay. God gave me those purses, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, so I walked in the door and Ruby was the door greeter, is that right, Ruby? Yeah. yeah. The door greeter, Ruby was the door greeter at TJ Maxx, I walk in, she, she's like, hey, hi, and I'm, I, I'm not making this up. I hear the Holy Spirit whisper to me, you're gonna hire Ruby. I'm like, okay, God, I do not know her. I don't even know she's Ruby. He did not say Ruby. <laughs> Little exaggeration, just right there. Um, you're gonna hire her. So Savannah came in and I took her aside. I'm like, Savannah, I just felt like the Holy Spirit said, we need to talk to her about a job at James River. <laughs> she goes, really? I'm like, yeah, I did. So I went up to Ruby. I said, hey, Ruby, do you, I'm not exactly sure what I said. Ruby, correct me if I'm wrong. It was something like, do you want to apply for a job at James River Church? Okay, good. <laughs> something like that. And Ruby is now one of the most phenomenal receptionists ever. The point being, when you're walking with an awareness of the presence of God, he is going to speak to you. Not only that, like directives, but he's going to remind you constantly, I love you. I love you. I love you today. The, the, word, the psalmist says his thoughts towards us, his cherished thoughts towards us. 
outnumber the grains of sand. And that he is constantly, night and day, thinking about you. Because he loves you. Some of you are like in this room and you're like, I I have never heard this before. It's so encouraging, but it sounds too good to be true. Maybe you were not raised in church. Maybe, maybe at one time long ago, you heard about God and maybe you heard little snippets about his love. Or maybe you were raised in an environment, a religious environment, where God is harsh and condemning and watching for when you fail and like you're constantly or have grown up to believe you're never going to be good enough for God. You know, sin, we all have a sin nature. And when God, at the beginning of time, created mankind, his desire was to have pure communion with them, intimacy with them that was beautiful and wholesome and amazing. And then sin came into the equation and caused a separation from that closeness. And you all know, most of you, probably have heard this because God didn't like that. He, he created a plan, a beautiful plan to send his son, Jesus, to bridge the gap. And when Jesus came, he walked the earth and was perfect. No, without sin, and he needed to be, to be able to be our redeemer. And then he took all of our sin and bore it on the cross for one reason, to break the curse and to bring us back into perfect, make a, make a way for us to have perfect, beautiful relationship with God. It's so amazing. That's how much God loves us. Listen to what it says in Colossians 1, 21 and 22 says this, it says, even though you were once distant from him, there's that separation that sin caused, living in the shadows of your evil thoughts and actions, get this, he reconnected you back to himself. He released his supernatural peace to you through the sacrifice of his own body as the sin payment on your behalf so that you could once again dwell completely in his presence. And I love this part. And now there is nothing between you and Father God, for he sees you. This is what happens when a girl opens her heart up to the truth of the gospel and to what Jesus did on the cross for her. For he sees you in that moment when you receive his grace. He sees you as holy, flawless, and completely restored. You know, Paul prayed in Ephesians 4, and this is really my prayer over every one of you tonight. I pray that you would have the power as all God's people should to understand how wide and how long and how high and how deep 
God's love is. Then you will be made complete in the fullness of His power. You will be made complete to understand and to be able to experience the fullness of His presence. Thank you so much for joining James River Church on our YouTube channel. Our prayer is that you were encouraged and your faith was strengthened today. And we wanna let you know that we'd love for you to be a part of our online family. As well, we'd love if you subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell for notifications. You'll be so glad you did because we're always putting out great sermons, new worship content, and it helps you know when we go live for our weekly services. We hope you have an amazing day and thank you again for watching. God bless.